All right, guys, so in the last video, we set up our back end with Node Express, Pusher, Cores, some other stuff. And we built the, the form on the front end with Materialize. We have our, all of our scripts connected. Now we want to add the front end JavaScript. So what we need to do is when we push this vote button, it needs to make a request to our back end to this, this route right here, this endpoint, which is slash poll. Okay, and then Pusher is going to trigger an event that we're going to subscribe to on the front end and it'll then get the points and the OS that was submitted okay whatever OS and also just a, a message a thank you message so in our main JS that's on the front end let's create a variable called form and we'll set it equal to document dot uh, let's use get element by D because we gave it an ID of vote dash form all right, and then we're going to add an event listener. So we'll say form dot add event listener. And in here we want to listen for a submit. And we'll just put an arrow function here. And let's pass in our event parameter. So we'll just pass in E and let's do an E dot prevent default just to prevent the default behavior. And now this is where we want to make our request. Actually, before we do that, we need to add a couple more variables. One is going to be the choice. Now, there's a lot of ways to get the checked value. Um, the older way would be to do like um, a select uh, by class name or something like that, and then loop through them, um, grab the correct value. We're going to use query selector which makes things a lot easier. Um, so we'll say query selector and we're going to grab the input that has the name equal to OS, which is all of them. But we want the checked version so we can use colon checked. OK, so you can use any kind of selector that you could that you could use in CSS. And this makes it really easy. And then we just want the value. OK, so you want to make sure you do dot value. That'll give us our choice. And then I'm going to create a variable called data, which is just going to be an object that has OS equal to that choice. And that'll be the data that we send along with our post request. All right. So to send our post request, we're going to use fetch. So we'll say fetch and the URL is going to be HTTP localhost. 3000 slash poll. OK, and then we're going to send a second parameter with an object. And we want to make sure that this is a post request. So we'll say method equals or method is post. And then we want to send the body, which will contain the data. OK, now I want to wrap this data in a function called JSON dot stringify so we can make it a JSON string before we send it off. And then we're going to need one more property here of headers. And we want to set this to new headers. And inside here, we're just going to pass in an object and let it know that it's JSON with by using content dash type. And we're going to set that to application slash JSON. All right. Now, fetch returns a promise, so we want to go right here, get rid of that semicolon and do a dot then. Uh, I'm actually going to put that on a separate line. I'm using the prettier extension, so if I save it might, yeah, it knocks it back up. But just for now, I'll go ahead and boot to that. So with fetch, we have to do two dot thens because first we have to map it to the type of data we want to return, which is JSON. So res.json. And then we need to do another dot then. OK, and then if there's an error, we can do a dot catch as well. So this dot then will actually include the data. And all I'm going to do with this data is console log it. OK, and then for the catch, that'll give us an error if there is one. And then I'll console.log the error. So that's our request. All right. Now, this is not going to do anything to do with the chart yet, but let's just save it. And let's open up our console. 
and just make sure we can actually make that post request. So we'll say Windows and vote and nothing happens. Uh, let's see. Did I include this in the HTML script source main JS? Am I missing something here? Form dot add event listener submit. Let's try again. Oh, there we go. All right. So we get back success. True message. Thank you for voting. Now it's also triggering push is also triggering an event right here. This OS poll and OS vote with this data, but we're not catching it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement canvas JS and build our chart. And then we're going to basically subscribe to this and then add those add the data points by this trigger right here. Okay, so we're going to go completely under the form event. Actually, let's give this a comment. We'll say form submit event and we're going to go all the way down under it and then we're going to implement canvas JS. So let's go to canvas JS. And just to give you an idea of how it works, we'll go to the docs and let's see working with data. Basically, what we want to do is create an array called data points and it's going to have, for instance, uh, it'll have label windows, label Mac, and then each Y value is that going to be the number of points, which one point is one vote. That's just to make it easy. All right. And we're going to start with all zeros. And then once we implement our database, we'll fetch from the back end the number of votes in the database and we'll fill that data points. All right. But for now, let's just create the data points. And I'm using let because we're going to actually be changing this late later on. So let's say let data points equals an array and each one will have a label. So this will be windows. And they're all they're all going to have a Y value of zero. That should be a comma. All right, so let's put a comma here and let's copy this down. We need four of them. So this one will be Mac OS Linux and other. All right, so those are our initial data points. Now we need to create a variable with our chart container. Okay, remember in our index file we have our chart container ID. Let's grab that. Set that to document dot query selector and it's going to be the ID of chart container. All right, and then we're going to just do if chart container exists, then we're going to create a variable called chart and we're going to set it to a new. I think it's canvas JS dot chart. Uh, pretty sure. Let me just yeah, right here. New canvas JS chart. And then we put the name of the container in quotes. So we'll say chart container. And then we have a second parameter, which will be any any um, ah, any objects we want. Let me just get rid of this sidebar. I'm sorry, I said objects options we want inside of this object. So I do want to do animation enabled, which will give us that little the so the 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 um, chart will slide up the bars. We'll set that to true. You can also set the theme. There's theme one theme two. I'm just going to set it to theme one. And then we can do a title which is actually an object and I just want it the text. Now later on I wanted to actually show the number of votes but since we don't have we can't have that yet because we don't have a database hooked up. I'm just going to say OS results for now. And then we want our data for the chart which is going to be an array and we want to put an object in here with the type Okay, so it's going to be a column chart. You can also do a bar chart. I think you can do a pie chart. 
you can look at the documentation if you want to learn more about canvas um, and then we want our data points which we're going to set to the data points variable or array that we have above all right then we want to render our chart which is going to go right here so chart dot uh, whoops chart dot render and let's save that and now if we reload chart is not a constructor let's see uh, what did I do wrong cons chart equals new canvas J oh this should be a, an uppercase C there we go so so now we have our canvas um, nothing's gonna happen if we vote uh, we're just gonna get our response down here we need to implement the um, subscription down here so we're gonna go right under the chart render and if we go to our pusher uh, dashboard here and we look at the client side implementation we're gonna grab this to log to console this will basically just show you everything that's going on in the console we also need to initialize our app like that and we then we need to subscribe so we're gonna actually copy all of that and put that right here okay your ID app ID will be different and it's okay to have this here it's not putting your app secret anywhere because this is the client side anyone could see this by just saying view source but it's okay to just have this and then when we subscribe we're not subscribing to my channel or binding to the event my event what we want if we look at our back end is OS poll and OS vote all right so we're going to change this to OS dash poll and we're going to change this to OS dash vote all right and then for this we don't want to alert data message what we want to do is we want to basically add the data to our chart okay so the way that we can do that is by taking our data points we're gonna manipulate the data points array and that's why I had to use let and not const so we're gonna set it to data points and then we're gonna map through it we're gonna use the high order function map and I'm just gonna use X here and then we want to check to see if the X dot label is equal to the data dot OS okay and if it is let's let's say X dot Y meaning the Y meaning this this value here so X dot Y and then we're going to append to it so plus equals we're going to append data dot points okay which could be anything but we remember we set the points to one so right here each point is one uh, and then after that we just want to return X okay if it's not equal so we want an else here to the data dot OS then we just simply want to return X and do nothing else all right and then we need to re-render the chart so we're gonna go right here and just say chart dot render all right let's save so now if we go and let's just refresh this and now you'll see we're getting all these logs in the console because we we said log to console um, but if I go and I vote let's say Windows vote there we go it's put on the chart if I say Mac vote and we can vote more than once if you wanted to implement something so that people can't vote more than once that's beyond the scope of this uh, but we can so now you can see Mac has two Windows has one all right, so we now have our real-time functionality. If I were to go to a different browser, I'm sorry, a different tab or client, whatever, it's going to start over because we don't have our vote stored anywhere. All right, so what I'll do is reload this page, but if I vote on this page, you'll see it on this one as well. All right, so we do have we have the real-time functionality complete. So now what I want to do in the next video is start to implement a database on the back end so that we can save our votes so that this doesn't happen and we can actually come and see how many votes there are and all that stuff. All right. So 
that's that's basically how you use pusher for real-time applications uh, i just want to take it a step further and add a database so i will see you in the next video